yeah it, i was like i need to leave this is this is too insane people are like and it, they had no problem with it they just they didn't even blink and i don't think that's okay i don't think that's okay Welcome everyone to the Johnny Rogers show. Yes, I am finally back doing podcasts. All 40 of you who asked for another one. Uh, <laughs> the reason why I'm doing this again and rebranding this again is because, well, as you can see, I'm in a new studio space. I have a lot more time to be able to do this because I have the luxury now of being able to work from a home office and do things remotely. Um, I.e., if you've seen any of my YouTube videos lately on Inform Overload, then you'll see that I've been you know, just working from home mostly. That was a personal choice so I could be closer to family, to be honest with you. It's another reason why I want to do this podcast is so that I can be more open and honest with people that want to hear it. If you're subscribed to this channel, at least then you're here to see me. So I'm going to give you more of me because uh, I feel like that's what I set out to do when I chose to be an entertainer. And lately I've been slacking. I mean, not so much. Slacking in the department of just like talking directly to a camera or to you podcast listeners who are listening through, you know, Apple or Spotify, which by the way, leave a five-star review if you can. I know you're only 30 seconds into the first episode back. I did do three episodes before and uh, they were back in like 2020, but honestly, I'm just throwing those out. There's no way that those should still be out in the world. The whole podcast is just me talking about the pandemic and what's happening and the shortage on toilet paper. It's like, nobody, nobody wants to hear this. You want to hear the uh, updates. <laughs> stuff that you don't usually get from me which is also why i'm not using a teleprompter this is going to be just a very stumbly a lot of ums a lot of ahs a lot of let me see what we got to talk about next but it'll grow it'll evolve i'm going to do just as many of these podcasts as i can really i'm going to try to interview people that i love in my life you know people that make me laugh harder than anyone else people that i find super interesting and uh, just introduce them to you guys because i feel like more people should know about you know patrick day for example who i've done countless songs with like believe which is uh, such a fun song that i was lucky enough to have him feature on and he was on top 10 nerd so if you saw him on top 10 nerd i'm sure you'll want to hear more about him as well i know he's doing like twitch streams right now too so yeah people like that people uh People like Pat, who I've been friends with for like over 10 years. So there's honestly going to be it's easier chemistry. You know, sometimes I wanted to like force a guest onto a podcast, not force them, not like <laughs> tell them you better come or there's going to be consequences. No, none of that shit. Just, uh, you know, trying to get people on the podcast. that I thought like, oh, that's not good for sound. Trying to get people on the podcast that I thought like, oh, they have a big audience like this. This person will be you know, a great person to have on. It's yeah, that's not always the best case. The best case is just to be open and honest with you guys. And uh, to be honest with you, this this filter looks uh, a little green, which is which is fine. If you're watching on YouTube, you're probably like, yeah, are you in a fish tank right now? What's happening? I'm still playing with it. We're, we're in episode one. I'm in a new apartment, which I love. I just moved to Ottawa from Toronto. So much better. I can tell you that right away. Uh, don't move here though. It's definitely boring. That's what I'm going to tell people so that they don't move here and ruin the city. But Ottawa is definitely, definitely a quieter place to live, which I enjoy thoroughly because in Toronto, I was getting like, harassed by a crazy person. Every, every other block it was like, I couldn't go outside for 15 minutes without having to walk around police crime scene tape. Like it was just a nightmare of a city. I remember I was walking, uh, no, I was walking, I was on the bus. And I'm going down Queen Street and I see this nice like restaurant, Italian restaurant or something. And they had a patio out on the middle of the street. And a lot of comedians are talking about that right now, but these ridiculous patios that are just in the middle of where the buses used to go. And they, they just said, fuck it to the bike lanes too. They're like, no more bike lanes. It's just patio season. So this couple's like eating like a steak over a sewer grate. And then just off to the left, there's a homeless man in the corner of where like a Rexall was and he's got his pants around his knees and I shit you not, he was defecating on the sidewalk but about five feet from where this, this couple was eating. Yeah, they, I was like, I need to leave. This is, this is too insane. People are like, and they, they had no problem with it. They just, they didn't even blink. 
And I don't think that's okay. I don't think that's okay. But Ottawa, everyone's like weirdly nice. I'm not used to it. I'm just walking down the street. People are smiling and waving at you. Just like, oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> it's nice. That's what I'm saying. And uh, with the luxury of the internet, you can do you can do whatever you want from anywhere. I'm going to live by that. I've been telling everyone that and I'm going to live by that. I met someone recently who was asking me about like, oh, how do I start a YouTube channel and everything? And I just told him, just do it. Just execute and just do it. That's the biggest thing that stops a lot of people. And so I had to, you know, take my own advice, which is why we're back here podcasting. I want to um, talk today. I'm probably going to title this uh, assumptions. Assumptions is a big thing that I'm seeing. Uh, I don't know if it's just me because I need to work on my own level of assuming things uh, from people, from coworkers, from everything. Um, but I'm seeing it a lot in the news even too. Like I was uh, covering on Inform Overload a lot of this Alc Baldwin um, tragic, tragic accident that took the life of uh, Helena Hutchins, who was a cinematographer on the film Rust. And all I saw in this was just assumptions, just people, how dangerous assumptions can be. And to this level, it was, it was fatal. i um, just going to share a screen here of this Alec Bowen article here. They were saying that the, the, the props department, I guess the head armor didn't properly check one of the revolvers that he then well, that they handed to the assistant director, which was Dave Halls. And then Dave called out cold gun and then handed that over to Alec Baldwin. And of course, when they call it cold gun on a set, if you've never been around a set, that means that it's, it's been cleared. It doesn't have like live ammunition. And also why would, again, one assume, one would assume that there would be no live ammunition on the set of a movie, but it was. This is Brandon Lee all over again, except it wasn't, I, I don't believe it was live ammunition with Brandon Lee. I think that was like a dummy bullet that actually got caught in the barrel and then the force just fired that out and it was, it was enough to, uh, to be fatal. But in this case, it was a real, they're saying it was a lead bullet, which a lot of people were making fun of me this morning when I did that video. Well, I don't even know when I'm putting this out. I said this morning on the date of October 28th, people <laughs> were saying, because I read lead as lead bullet, like police find the lead bullet, the one bullet that actually hit her. Um, And then as soon as that video went out, I was like, it was lead. It was lead. I don't know why I said lead. (laughs) That's what happens when I rush, when I rush things and I'm properly, uh, I'll probably sit and take a second and be like, maybe they're talking about a lead bullet, but that's exactly what it was. It was a lead bullet. And the gun wasn't checked by the assistant director and it wasn't checked by the head armor. The head armor said that she had checked, she had checked the, the weapons. There was like three of them that were on like some barrel outside by the church there. Then they had taken a break for lunch and the weapons were locked up, but then there was still ammunition on out in the open. And then she said, when she came back, she's saying that it was, it was fine. And then she handed it over to Dave Halls. Now Dave Halls is assuming that the head armor has done her due diligence in checking the gun. And the head armor assumes that the gun was safe when she checked it, but didn't check it again when she got back after lunch. So in that time, somebody could have been out with a real revolver shooting you know cans off of a fence or something i don't know it's america is that what they do in the (laughs) in the open plains in new mexico i don't know like but honestly somebody could have been shooting them they come back while everybody's gone on lunch this person's shooting cans off a fence comes back puts the revolver next to the other revolvers thinking that it's just where the revolvers go perhaps i don't know i'm just trying to follow this kind of logic and then the head armor comes back. They said they need a prop weapon. She just grabs one of them. We checked them all before, so they should be fine. Hands it off. And it turns out that it had like, I think a few dummy rounds in it, but then one of them was not. And the dummy round is indicated by a hole in the side of the bullet and then a cap on top. And so this one, uh, according to Dave Halls in the affidavit, they did not have that. So that is worrisome. And it's also again like i said it's just it just shows you how dangerous assumptions could be it just you if you if you're not especially on a when you're handling a, like a weapon if you're not if you're not checking in with the other person and communicating what what is exactly what you need 
is this gun checked? And then checking it yourself, perhaps, or, you know, getting someone to double check. I don't know what the solution was. I suppose, uh, like I said before, everything is like you can you can call like football plays after everything went down and been like, oh, they should have done this. They should have done that. And it's like, well, it is what it is. It, that's that's what happened. And you just hope that the right people are held accountable is all right. And uh, where was it going on this one? Oh, yeah. From Alec Baldwin. There was another there was another story I saw today about Logan Paul getting into a fight with just some random, I think it was just some random dude. Logan Paul is just drunk outside of, which, you know, he's fine to get intoxicated or whatever he wants to do, but I just love this titling. Drunk Logan Paul and Mike Malak get into fight. And it's, it's pretty ridiculous. I'm mainly playing this too, because I just want to test and see how the audio comes out on it. If, uh, I'm only going to play 10 seconds of it because if it gets copywritten, then um, <laughs> this whole episode comes down anyways. And then only the people on the podcast network get to listen to it. Let's try. Okay. He's answering all these questions. Somebody calls him a, a pussy. He's a white man with dreads. Oh, he gets slapped around. This man is five foot tall. He's five foot nothing easily. I don't know if Logan's just tall. Okay. <laughs> Mike Malek comes in to be like, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who just <laughs> walks up to a person like that and says something like that is clearly just looking for a reaction. And that's what that was. And he got a reaction. He got a, he got a little viral clip for himself that he can put on Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Jesus Christ. I'm getting too high. I shouldn't get high before these things. That's for damn. Or maybe I should. I don't know. Let's switch the name of TikTok to Tic Tac because fucking Mark Zuckerberg is doing that. <laughs> just deciding that he's going to change Facebook's name. That's fucking ridiculous. He's changing it to Meta. Meta. M-E-T-A. Why? Why, Zuckerberg? Why are you doing this? <laughs> Announcing the news at Facebook's Connect conference, Zuckerberg said, we are a company that builds technology to connect. Together, we can finally put people at the center of our technology, and together, we can unlock a massively bigger creator economy. What the fuck does that mean? To reflect who we are and what we hope to build, right now our brand is so tightly linked to one product. But over time, I hope we are seen as a metaverse company. A metaverse company. And when he says, <laughs> when he says our brand is so tightly linked to one product, he's probably talking about the fact that there was a Facebook whistleblower that's coming out. <laughs> So that there can be more government control over social media and everything that we post and say online, which is the ultimate goal with that, right? Like this lady just pops out of nowhere and suddenly she has all the, what? It's like, yeah, she, and she was saying stuff too. That's like, yeah, we know this. There's been like countless Netflix documentaries about how fucked up social media is to your mental health. Like it's, she was acting like it was brand new information that she like uh, Snowden out of the company. It's going to be the new name for uh, snitching on your on your workplace. Pull the Snowden. No, we're not starting that. Okay, that's fine. You can let me know in the comments if you want to do that. <laughs> pull, pull a Snowden. Same shit too happened with uh, Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber. They got harassed just walking outside. There was some some lady that was just like, say hi to Brazil. Again, I don't even know if this audio is going to play, but I have to share the screen. Shout out to Exposing Celeb on Instagram. Get out from in front of us, he says to him after she's like, say hello to Brazil. We love you there. He's like, get out from in front of us. <laughs> Not having a good time. Again, an assumption from someone that thinks like, oh, this person's a celebrity. I've bought their music before, or I've gone to one of their concerts, or I've bought one of their merch t-shirts. So I have the luxury of, I can just walk right up to them and fucking be like, hey, you save this message for me. There's a whole website for that. <laughs> What's that site called again? What's that site called where you can 
Cameo. That's what it is. Cameo. If you want Justin Bieber to say hello to Brazil, Brazil, you should order one on Cameo. I'm sure it's like $1,000. Lord knows how much how much that shit is. Back to this metaverse insanity. He's literally trying to... Yeah, like, I don't know if Zuckerberg is just... Try, he said something about like how the future is not going to create itself. Like, we have to do that. It's like, do, do we have to? <laughs> do we really have to? Like, how on... Un, how, unhappy are these billionaires that they just need to change so much shit right you think some somebody with all of that money would need to change so many things about this planet bezos wants to leave the space branson wants to leave the space elon musk is like let's change everything to electric these people are just trying to change everything it's like it's fine we're good why don't you fix the stuff that we hate you know Fix, uh... <laughs> no, I can't even think of things I hate. That's how positive a person I am. I can't even think of things I hate. <laughs> Fix Toronto. How about you do that, billionaires? Fix Toronto. Fix that housing issue because it's an issue. Oh, that's always a good note to leave on, fucking the housing issues. Jesus Christ. Um, What else was I going to talk about? Yeah, you know what? I think that's a good place to, to land it. Land this comedy podcast on, on a housing crisis half ass joke. Anyways, there's going to be more to come. There's going to be guest interviews. <laughs> there's going to be more of me talking about topical stuff like Facebook and Logan Paul and Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber to get into that YouTube algorithm. That's really what it was. I apologize to the podcast listeners at home who are just listening to this on audio, if you got none of that audio and it was just silence while well, the video played for me, and I, but I enjoyed it. I want you to know that I enjoyed it. Um, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tap that like button, do all that fun stuff. And uh, if you're listening on Apple or iTunes, make sure you leave a five-star review because that would be helpful. But I, don't, I honestly don't care. I'm going to come back and keep doing this either way because it's fun. And I'm just going to end it like that. Bye.